Okay, uh, this next cast we have is Shaoxia versus Motive. It's gonna be on the map Tempest. Uh, this is a pretty interesting map. We'll get into that. Oops. Right now. Um, so Shaoxia, if you're not familiar with him, and you might not be even if you watch competitive StarCraft, easily one of the best uh, Zerg players in China. One of the best players in China in general. He's regularly in top 50, top 60 on the ladder. He plays with pros all day. He beats pros all the time. Um, and this is going to be against Motive, who is Protoss down here in the bottom right. Uh, and looking very sharp in the last few games I've, I've been able to cast of him. If you like this kind of content, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll be releasing content every day. And we are hoping to build this channel up more and more, not just with StarCraft, but with Stormgate. Uh, Zero Space and all the other RTS games that are going to be coming out in the future. So I hope I earn your support. So this map, I mean, immediately you got to look at this huge entrance here. This is massive. Uh, but it's high ground to low ground. So like, you know, one of the strongest things Zerg can do early on in this matchup is Hydra Bust. Whatever race you play, you can't deny it. We've seen so many Hydra Busts. Even at the pro level, it just seems to be a very viable build. It has the possibility um, to shut the game down immediately, but also you can recover from it better than most, um, you know, rushes. So, you know, it makes it less attractive. Weirdly enough, we did have some games of uh, Zergs actually beating Protosses because Protoss has got two... A cavalier with the high ground entrance so you need to at least be prepped for maybe a hydra rush <laughs> but um again hydra rush is usually not as strong this is nexus on 11 or 12 i guess probably into forge and this is particularly good against overpool it looks like this game was actually hatchery first It's always a little bit scary for the Protoss if you get scouted here. You will die if you do this build in your 9-pool. This was something I had a hard time with when I came back to StarCraft 1 uh, after basically not casting it for a long time because my main gig was StarCraft 2. Is I didn't realize how many players were taking Fucking on asshole. some risk. God damn it. Yo, Dandy, thank you so much. Appreciate the sub, man. Uh, but look at this. He scouts it, and he says, wait a minute. You're not even going to go over pool in this case. Wait, what? He's going to drone rush it? What? Oh, it kind of makes sense. There's no cannon. Okay, he starts the cannon. What? Oh, my God. What, did, what are they doing? Oh, my God. This fully walls the drones off. Oh, no, it doesn't. You can mind move through there. So now he can go for the, the cannon. So the cannon I, it could be picked off here. This drone to body block. The cannon's gone. Guys, there are lings coming. Oh my god. He's going to go for this cannon. He's trying to work her drill. He comes around the side. The drones are headed back out. The lings are inbound. The lings should be able to get here before the cannon finishes. Can the lings fit through? here no oh oh but he gets through anyways well i'm no i'm no expert guys but i would say this is pretty bad for zerg he only got two uh lings in he's gonna get his probe sent back over here i've only seen lings made on the map Layer starts. The five drone rush was cool. The problem is, is that it's actually hard to get through here. I didn't realize this, this is a fully sealed off unless you get one uh, drone to drill through these uh, patches over here. I mean, this is really, really difficult to deal with. So I feel like um, motive's in pretty good shape right now. What a crazy hold, man. I'm I'm just stunned. The last Zergling is going to be buying time in his base. And of course, we have drones being produced in mass. 
but you got to give the tempo to the Protoss here. We have that second uh, gas being made. The core, you know, when you do this build, the next pylon that you get in your main is so late, you have to start the core over here in your natural. So the Stargate's going to come down. Now this looks to be two hatch uh, Muta. Is Motive going to sense that and just throw down a second Spire? Keep in mind that, you know, we can see everything, but Motive hasn't really seen much of anything. Oh, you know what's so funny? Saw how the Zealot fit through there? The Zealot will fit through, and a Zergling will fit through if there's an Assimilator and a Gateway, but they won't if it's the, the Vespian Gas Volcano. So just in case you notice that and we're like, what? What is going on? That's what's actually happening. So we've got the Citadel uh, on the way. You know, it, it's a straightforward game in a lot of ways here for uh, Motive in that he's going to have to survive. He needs to first scout if he can. We've got the Stargate done. So he'll have enough time to basically confirm Spire attack. On the other hand, uh, you know, uh, look, I mean, maybe there's a possibility um, that Chao Xia comes in here and, and does some like really crazy damage with the Mutas. If he could snipe the first Corsair, that would be really good. But it, it's hard, man. It's tough. And he knows that like he should be ahead enough if he just makes cannons and doesn't die. He's going to be okay. So he sees, he sees the three eggs and the fourth. He goes, okay, as the Spire's done, that has to be Mutas coming. And we're going to have four Scourge and six Mutas. Notice that he cancels the cannon here and makes it over here. He makes one cannon here. I would not be surprised. Yep, there it is. Another cannon's warped in right over here. Corsairs are looking for kills on the map. Is this too greedy? Oh, this might be a mistake. Motive might have been too greedy. Oh my god. What? Okay, he's gonna get the kill on this one. This one's isolated. He can try to lay a trap. Almost like a pair of caltrops. The Scourge can just intercept the, cor uh, the Corsair as it comes out. He's gonna go in here for the dive. He's coming down. He gets one. He doesn't get two. This is five mutas versus the cannon. If he takes the cannon out, the foothold's gone. The glaives were still bouncing on that Corsair, but he doesn't have enough. The next mutas could come in. One, two, three. Three cannons and a battery inbound. This cannon's gonna quietly finish. Uh, while these um, Corsairs try to buy time, the battery's not done yet. He does take cover behind the cannon. There's actually a counterattack here with these zealots. Oh my gosh. The mutas have to turn around. And he can fork these zealots off to try to kill drones. It's a perfect way to buy time. Back at home, the cannon's finished. He's gonna have four cannons up. Uh, he has a battery up as well. I would imagine, yeah, plus one air attack is on the way here. I don't know that Xiaoxia can actually recover. This is some serious pain. He gets another drone. Two more zealots come out. Are you probably going to lose the zealots? Yeah, but what's more important is that you buy time. He's actually going to hide them until the mutas come back out. He might be able to create some opportunities for himself there. DTs. Now we know that the plus one air attack on the Corsairs is gonna be done. But when the um, DTs come into play, if the Mutas and Scourge can't defend the Overlords, the DTs are basically the nail in the coffin. But this is still a sizable amount. Armor's about to finish. This may not be done yet. But again, you know, oh, he actually cancels one cannon. So it's only three cannons in the main. So, sorry, where did the Corsairs go? They're up here. He could morph one Archon. He will morph one Archon. Here we go. He's flying in. He's looking for the Corsairs. The Corsairs are going to come in here and merge with this. They got to back up. He's got to not take too much damage. 
These the court cannons have to try to buy time. He does do a moving shot in a circle through where the mutas are. Archon not down here yet. He's just still trying to dodge the scourge. I only see one Corsair. That's all I see. The Scourge are ready to pop out and take out the Corsair that's going to be there. Two Sunks are here. I see DTs. I see an Archon. I don't see a Terramate. This is insane. No way. He has Overlords. Hold on, this is a lot though. He gets the one Corsair out. The Scourge are gonna hunt this down. He gets taken out. Still four Mutas over here. And now we're gonna see the push in. Now, here's the problem too. An Archon can beat Mutas head to head. He should use the Sunk to target the Archon, by the way. Are there any Overlords? There's no Overlords in the main. That's gonna be it. Wow, that was a crazy game. That was really cool. Xiaoxi is really good. The fact that he managed to make that possible is wild to me. But you got to remember, um, when they get the... Uh, where's the moment where the Corsairs are out? Okay, so it's a little bit past this. This is what made the game... Almost impossible to win. So, he got too greedy. He was trying to pick off an Overlord that's out here. And that allowed the Mutas and the Scourge here. Uh, they're somewhere. Uh, maybe they haven't hatched yet. To block these out. And this is what allowed the main to get busted which allowed the follow-up attack to work. Crazy. How many courses does it take to kill a Scourge before they hit? If you have five and plus one air, it, it will hit. It will, it will kill them. Six, otherwise, I think. Six or seven. But once you see they're going air, that you have to just keep making something to defend it. All right, well, thank you so much for watching that, uh, that cast of mine. I hope you enjoyed it. We're going to have a lot more content on this YouTube channel every day. A new video is coming out and a new short. Um, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment in the comment section and check out Tasteless Threads where you can get my merch 10% off right now for the holiday sale. Bye-bye.